Hello guys. So today we are going to talk about a new feature which has been added in Azure Data Factory and that is what they are calling it as change data capture. It is still in preview mode and there are lot, not too much of a documentation available but what I'll try to do in this video is I'll just walk you around that what all thing you can expect here, what all things we can configure. Uh, it still has very limited uh, um, uh, sources and the target which is available right now but let, let's look into this and see how useful it is because i'm sure that once it becomes available full fledged with multiple different connectors and sources this is going to be very very useful because in all or most of the etl processes where you have to custom build your ETL pipeline to capture only the incremental data and that is really hectic task to do and it requires a lot of custom coding. So Azure Data Factory or Microsoft has tried to overcome all those things. It has actually encapsulated all those logics inbuilt into it so that you just have to configure your source and target and done. I have tried it with one source uh, as a uh, data storage uh, which is storage uh, gen 2 and target as SQL. So here you will find that uh, you, you can see the pipeline data set data flow power query you used to have this at a very top level right now the change data capture has been added still in preview mode uh, that is why uh, when I tried it few days back there are some things which were not working and even now I face some challenges when I was trying to configure SQL as a source, I could do it as SQL as a target, but not as a source. So I'll show you what you can do and what all things are here. So just click on this, you say new mapping preview. I'm adding a new one because I already have one. Uh, I'll just show you how it looks. Now you can see in the source type, these are the options which you have right now available. In top what you see is Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL, Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Database Manage Instance. It means it is targeting only most of the Azure resources that to in Azure SQL databases, right? Then you also have a file format here. Here it is not showing a Gen 1, Gen 2 or blob storage. Instead, you have to first select the file format. Like let's say I'm selecting deleted text, delimited text. Now you see there are uh, link services which I have available. So if you want to know that these files are supported on which all data sources let me click on new so what you will see here in the type box i can see only blob storage gen 1 and gen 2 it means only these three sources are supported right now so what i'll do i'll just cancel it i'll select one of my existing ones now what you'll have to configure here is a folder path so in this link service i can select any of my folder as a source so I'll do it. So I'll select my container and let me select something source. Let's select one folder. Okay. So this is how you are going to configure your source. So when you click on continue, now it is asking me for the target. Now I am selecting my target as Azure SQL database. Now you can see, uh, okay, so right now what I'll do is, uh, I'll create a new table. So right now there is no table called dot one. Dot one is the, actually the folder which we selected as a source so that it has taken it as by default. So let it be and we'll say continue. So what has happened is behind the scene, it has created our source and destination as mapping. Now it is trying to load the schema of our source and target. So this is something which was not working few days back. And even after multiple tries, it was not coming up. So I had left, left it. Now when I tried it today again, then I could see it. So by the time it is coming, what I'll do is I'll show you the existing one, which I had done earlier. Now here you can see I have given this as a source and destination as table name is 2021. I'll show you the mapping. Now you can see the mapping part, it says direct and it has all the columns listed and in the target side also, if you have the schema defined already, you can actually map column by column. Now the good part I saw is apart from the columns, you can also create derived column. You can do some kind of small transformation like you can trim your columns. You can make it, you can apply some functions like upper, lower, 
right you can even give aggregate you can do some minimum maximum and first though i tried doing one of the average function and somehow it didn't work out i'm yet to figure out why it didn't but i also had a question how it is applying like if you say sum is it going to apply sum across the data set or because there is no way for you to define the partition right so i'm yet to figure out those things but maybe because it's in preview mode they are still working on it it didn't work out but rest of the thing did work so this is how you can define your mapping now going back so it is as simple as that now within this same source and target now what if you want to create one more mapping right and you want to give a different source and different target uh, you cannot do it here i thought there will be a way that i can actually create a new source and target uh, combination but that cannot be done if you want to do that you'll have to create a new mapping here the way we did it here right now what you can do is within this you can add more mappings like for the same source you can create few more folders or container can be configured right now here you see this is grayed out because we have already used it so if you want to create some more mapping you'll have to say new and then you'll go here and you'll add a new folder path so it means within a storage account if you have multiple tables or multiple data set you can configure all of them together right and for each one of them you can actually create your target tables so that is how it is uh, at this moment and you do not have too many things to configure here you have, can choose your source target and you can give the mapping and then you have to set the latency so right now you can see these are the options available so you can run your pipeline every 15 minute 30 minute one hour or two hours so these are the options and very soon uh, they are going to enable less than one minute as well which would be to make it more kind of live connections right streaming or uh, I, I would say that uh, it, it will be continuous streaming so you won't see any lags right but that is yet to come so right now it is only 15 minutes uh, only one problem i saw here is that when you configure for 15 minutes uh, to see it running you have to at least wait for 15 minutes so it does not have a way to run it right exactly at the same time suppose i have configured it i want to run it and see that whether it is working or not so there is no way to do it okay i wish that should have been the case so that i can actually test it so here you'll have to wait for 15 minutes to see it for running for the first time and when i was trying to do the uh, testing i uploaded a new file to see that it is actually capturing the new files or not for that again you'll have to wait for 15 minutes so for making every test you'll have to wait at least for 15 minutes until they enable the less than one minute uh, uh, configuration right so i have few results already with me i'll show that so once you have configured it if you can see in the monitoring page also you have extra uh, category added which says change data capture right now i can see all my runs so here you can see that every 15 minute i had three runs and i was i kept uploading one different files and actually it did work every time it was loading those 500 uh, rows which was there in my file so no issues with that it really uh, did the job and it did not actually pick the file which was already processed so it created actually the change data capture work here so thumbs up for that so this was about data lake as a source and sql as a sink now i'll show you the problem which i was facing when i was trying to configure it for sql as a source so let's try that again this time i'm selecting azure sql database as my source now you see fail to fetch entities and this is a, a continuous message i'm getting 
so my link service is correct my data set is correct i mean it is authenticated the test is successful it is working in other places but somehow it is not able to load those so i think there is some issue maybe it's temporary issue or maybe they're still working on it but because of this i could not test sql as a source and lake as a destination because i was really interested to know how it actually configures in the table for change data capture because if it's lake as a source i can understand that it is actually picking the metadata of the file at what time the file is created and what time my pipeline ran the last and based on that it is picking only the file which was created new now when it comes to sql as a data source then probably it would ask us to identify that last modified did some column through which it can identify right so that's how that's what i wanted to check but i could not do it that's another thing uh, one more glitch i found or i would say i think probably microsoft can uh, actually improve on it is data flow debug so as soon as i switch my pages here and there are refresh it automatically actually turns this on and it, it was turning on when I was not doing anything as well. So this is actually concerned because uh, it costs you uh, the more duration of time it is switched on Microsoft will be charging me. So I don't want this to be on when I don't actually need it. So many a time I have observed this and just with a switch of uh, uh, different pages or uh, with a refresh it, it was automatically getting switched on. So I think that that is something which Microsoft can improve on. So that's all guys for now. And if you like this, please uh, like the video and subscribe for it and share it with your friends. Thank you. Thanks for watching.